Hello there. What's going on everybody? Today I'm coming to you with the T70 X-Wing expansion unboxing for X-Wing 2.0. Uh, we were going to open this thing up and take a look at it for you today and uh, do a comparison to the original T70 X-Wing unboxing. I'm just going to tear this thing open. I don't save the packaging. I'm going to do a little bit of tearing. And, uh, and the front part is totally separate from the back part. So don't just tear the back open and throw it away. While I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to have to cut a little bit. While I'm doing this, I want to remind you guys, there is still another round of the giveaway going on right now. There's still time to enter the really, really big one. This is the uh, giveaway for the Superstar Destroyer. Oh my goodness. This thing does not want to open. I'm going to break something today. But it better not be this ship. Wow, wait. These are really a pain in the butt. I'm just saying. I need scissors, I think, instead of a blade. I could get my sword. Okay, so so the video is going to end here because I can't get it open. It's not going to be able to. All right. Goodness gracious! Why do they pack these things so difficult? Right. <laughs> if I wasn't filming, it would be so much easier. I, I'm, I'm sure. All right, we're going to take a look at the miniature first because I think this is what a lot of you guys want to see. And uh, here it is, folks: the new T70 X-wing. Um, but yes, there is still time to enter to win the Superstar Destroyer giveaway. And all you have to do is become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. And you can win yourself a Superstar Destroyer for Star Wars Armada. In the form of a cool stuff gift card, which you could in theory use for whatever. Now, just for comparison purposes, I've got a T-70 X-Wing from X-Wing 1.0 right here. And boy, these do look the same, don't they? The paint is virtually the same. I can't even tell the difference. Let's look at the back. The engines, however, are different. The engines are not painted on the T70 uh, from X-Wing 1.0. The engines on the T70 for X-Wing 2.0 are painted. Uh, and the main difference here is right there. Is that the S-foils close, whereas on these, they do not. They do not. And of course, for comparison's sake, we also have the Poe Dameron T70, which is for Heroes of the Resistance pack, which you can not get with the foldable unfoldable x s foils and these actually these these go pretty good like like they, they snap shut i know you're supposed to actually use the engines for these they're a little more durable than grabbing on these little these little uh flimsy guns here but yeah they they open and close pretty well stay that way that's they've really made some improvements although you can get drunky x-wing that way oh goodness don't drop it i always i literally always drop stuff and i just gotta I gotta stop. Don't buy any of my used X-Wing stuff because it will have been dropped several times. <laughs> right. So let's take a look at the uh, the cards and everything else and we'll get uh, get rolling here. But yeah, like comparison's sake, very, very similar. I mean, like, you know, the cockpit is a little different. Like the size of the window is slightly bigger on the 1.0 version. Um, paint job is almost the same. Even underneath, even the parts you're not going to look at. Almost the same. Almost identical. It's, you can tell like in some of the detailing it is a slightly different sculpt, but I mean, almost no difference. I mean, it seems like a slightly different sculpt. I think it seems like they, they went with the original version of the sculpt and then modified it just a little bit to facilitate the, uh, you know, the foldable S-foils. All right, so. Let's see, I wonder if they remembered to give us all the components that we would need. First off, I'm noticing shields and target locks, so that is a pretty good sign. I mean, if we're being honest, you know, they kind of screwed that up in some of the first uh, X-Wing 2.0 stuff. All right, so we've got our, we've got our dial here, uh, and the T-70 X-Wing does have uh, a bunch of blue maneuvers, and it has the three talon rolls. We got our three shield tokens here. We've got target locks for number 12. We have 312 dials there. Uh, we have our bases for nine num, just Pava, Joff, Eloasti, Temin Wexley, Poe Dameron, uh, Carrie Kun, Bastion, uh, Tubbs, Blue Squadron, Red Squadron. Let's see, do we have, and then the Black Squadron Ace. Yep, so we've got all of those. And now we've got, uh, what else do we got? We've got the Focus, we've got the two Evades, we've got our, all of the rest of our, and it looks like they could have fit a little more on here. 
They should have actually thrown in a couple extra shields for all those folks who bought the other conversion kits. Um, you know, that, that couldn't, couldn't get them. Now, I do want to point out, there is actually a slight difference between this and the conversion kit. Now, granted, you know you're supposed to get everything the same. Like, the conversion kit's supposed to be the same, right? But here's the difference that I'm noticing is, like, Black Squadron Ace, because they only give you one of him in the conversion kit. This is the one from the conversion kit right here. Black Squadron Ace on the back side is just another Black Squadron Ace. But here is Black Squadron Ace, and on the back side is Poe Dameron. I know, and that's interesting. Same thing with Bastion and Tubbs, who are just the same on front and back in the conversion kit. Here, uh, Bastion is on the back side of Elo Asti, so you couldn't run both of those, but of course it's only one ship. And then Tubbs is on the back side of Joff Sea Striker. And in uh, the conversion kit, they are just double sided uh, for those guys. So that's like, well, you know, a minor little difference. Not really a big thing, but just something, you know, worth noting. And of course, we have our, our base and our, our other stuff here. So we'll have to pull that stuff out. We did not get any, um, any medium bases in that conversion kit either, which is worth noting. All right. Boom. Shalak lock. There we go. He's in there. Now let's take a look at our actual ships here. Uh, we have Poe Dameron. There we go. After you perform an action, you may spend a charge to perform a white action, treating it as red. And of course, all of these T-70s have the weapon hard point, or you can equip a cannon, a torpedo, or a missile. They've got um, focus, target lock, and boost. And uh, they can also get barrel roll if you're using the S-foils. Uh, but yeah, three attack, two agility, four hull, and three shields. These are some tough, tough ships. Poe comes with the charge, and he can, he can recharge that. We've got the Elo Asti at initiative five, and he's got after you reveal a red talon roll maneuver. If you have two or fewer stress tokens, you may treat that maneuver as white. Yes, I said white. The nine num over here. After you gain a stress token, if there's an enemy ship in your front arc at range zero through one, you may remove that stress token. He wants to be right on them. Carry Kun, while you boost, you may use the hard ones templates instead. Temin Wexley. After you fully execute a speed two to four maneuver, you may perform a boost action. Jess Pava, while you defend or perform an attack, you may spend one charge or one non-recurring charge from one of your equipped astromechs in upgrades to re-roll one of your dice for each other friendly ship at range one. Joff Sea Striker, after you lose a shield, gain an evade token. Lieutenant Bastion, after a ship at range one to two is dealt a damaged card, you may acquire a lock on that ship. J. Chris Tubbs, after you fully execute a blue maneuver, you may choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1. If you do, that ship removes a stress token. One Black Squadron Ace. Another complaint is that you're getting, you're getting Black Squadron Ace. If you want that initiative 4 with the talent guy, um, you know, he's, you know, he's a nice little ace for a generic. But uh, you're only getting one of him in the conversion kit. So that makes uh, purchasing a T-70 nice because it said if you wanted to run lots of Black Squadron Aces and don't want to buy a thousand conversion kits, uh, that's one way. This is one way to get an extra Black Squadron Ace. Red Squadron Expert and Blue Squadron Rookie. We've got a bunch of quick build cards here. First is our Poe Dameron quick build card. And then our Poe, Jess, Black Squadron Ace. And we have Elo Asti, Joff Sea Striker, Jacris Tubbs, just by himself. We've got two more. We've got Nine Num, Lieutenant Bastion, and Red Squadron. Tim and Wexley, Kerr Kun, and Blue Squadron Rookie, right there. And we've got some upgrades. I'll take a look at these. Put them, put those to the right. Okay, we've got the BB Astromech. Right there, before you execute a blue maneuver, you may spend a charge to perform a barrel roll. Always nice, very similar to BB-8, but only twice, right? Then BB-8, who has been improved. Again, but he's only two times, because two charged. Before you execute a blue maneuver, you may spend a charge to perform a barrel roll or a boost. So BB-8 has learned a little bit, he has evolved. He's becoming Skynet. 
All right, M9G8. While a ship you are locking performs an attack, you may choose one attack die. If you do, the attacker re-rolls that die. Again, you can re you can lock friendly ships, so um, it's pretty cool. Black one. This one is really cool. After you perform a boost action, I'm sorry, not a boost action, a, uh, gosh, what the heck is that called? Um, you know the thing where you move an extra thing? It, it, I, I, why am I getting... Why am I calling it a boost? It's not a boost. It's a slam. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's like in real time. I could read you saying, why are you calling it boost? After you perform a slam action, you can lose a charge. Then you may gain an ion token and remove a disarm token. If your charge is inactive, you cannot perform the slam action. So basically, this is a one-shot deal. It's going to give you that slam that you can move. You can, you know, you can do that extra move, uh, but you get a weapons disable token if you don't mind taking an ion, then you can go ahead and uh, get in. Remove, you can still shoot if you take an ion, which is very nice. And if you want to give him advanced slam, you can also, you know, do some crazy shenanigans. We also get a targeting synchronizer. And we get the integrated S foils closed and open, double-sided card. And what I think is really kind of bizarre here is that the T70 can take this yeah, you know, the tech upgrade, but we don't get, you know, the guidance. The, basically, the upgrade that lets you change your, um, you, you know, spend a focus to turn a blank into a hit, uh, and and that really annoys me. And I'm I'm pulling it up right here. It's uh, we don't get primed thrusters. We don't get advanced optics either. Those only come in the conversion kit. So if you want those, the T70 is not going to get you a whole lot. And you're only getting two of those in the conversion kit. Really think they should have included those in the T-70 expansion as well. That would have been really nice because T-70 is a ship you definitely may want to run that on. I wanted to run that on lots of T-70s and now I can only run two of them if, and that's only from the conversion kit. So that is what we're looking like right now. So here's the uh, old, here's the new. Psh, dancing, dancing. All right, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think down in the comments below. <laughs> uh, don't forget to enter that giveaway also and you can check out crabock.com hop in my discord big thanks to my patrons on patreon as well i want to thank you guys so much for watching all right thank you guys and have a great day